uh, COC presentation uh, on a very interesting topic, <laughs> a very challenging topic as well. <laughs> and ah, we have got Pochinda. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> uh, okay, Mark, uh, the stage is yours. Or you can start anytime you like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fantastic. Well, let me take it away then. Uh, it's great to be here with all of you this afternoon. Uh, thank you for taking the time to hear my presentation. And a special thanks to the panel for the presence and their willingness to lend me their expertise here. Uh, the name of my thesis, and hence the name of this presentation, is Measuring Meaning in Life, Daily Diaries and the Comprehensive Measure of Meaning. And we're going to dive into exactly what that means in one second. Where we're headed today, I'm going to go through some background, tell you a little bit about myself, look at my research questions and tell you why I think this research is important. We're going to look at my proposed methodology and analysis along with what we hypothesize we might find and finish with some practicals. Look at a proposed timeline of budget and talk about some further training that's required. Our research team is made up of Joseph Kirochi, who's been my supervisor, and he will be the chief investigator, along with Baljinder, who will be is my co-supervisor. And I'd just like to acknowledge and thank Joseph for his dedication to me and meeting with me weekly and for his patience uh, in helping me remember what it means to be a full-time student again. A little bit about myself. I'm a married man. I've got four beautiful children. And for the past 16 years, I've been involved with a Catholic not-for-profit organization called NET Ministries. Uh, NET is about reflecting on the deeper questions of life. Things like, what does it mean to be human? Why are we here? Speaking about hot topic issues like self-image or social justice. And bringing those questions to young people around Australia. And it's kind of through my involvement with NET and reflecting on these questions that has brought me to this point here today where I've wanted to dive into them uh, from a more scientific angle and uh, from a more quantitative perspective after having all of this wonderful qualitative data uh, over many years that's kind of filled my head. So let's begin. What, what is meaning in life? Now, as I begin, I just want you to reflect briefly. Perhaps we need to go back to pre-COVID, you know, to a moment on Monday morning. You've come away from your weekend and one of your work colleagues says to you something like, how was your weekend? Now, I don't know about you, but for me, suddenly, you know, the weekend seems like it's, it's years away. I have to struggle to recall, what did I even do this weekend, you know? And then how do I make a judgment like that? Do I literally think about everything that I did that weekend? Or do I kind of just flip through the highlights and, and try to make a judgment based on the first thing that pops into my mind? I'm going to leave that with you as a rhetorical question. We're going to come back to that later. So what are we talking about when we ask, what is the meaning in life concept? Heinzelman and King famously asked this in 2013 uh, out of great frustration about the definitional ambiguity that was around this concept of meaning in life. It's becoming more clear. Slowly, researchers are, are kind of gathering consensus around what they're calling the tripartite model of meaning, which basically means that meaning is made up of three different things. So it's made up of coherence, does life make sense? Significance, does life matter? And direction, where am I going? And Martilla and Steger proposed this in 2016 and Vanderweel has built on this just very recently and he's made some further distinctions. He's broken these three domains up even further to talk about um, global coherence, does life make sense in general? And then individual coherence, does, does my life make sense? Significance, does my life matter to me? That's subjective significance. And objective significance is, does life matter, does my life matter to others? And then they've broken direction into three different things, mission, purpose, and goals, where mission is a broad framework Purpose is about the bigger intentions that someone has and goals are the smaller things that someone's looking to achieve on a weekly or daily basis. 
as a part of my study, there will be a formal uh, kind of literature review, but just in terms of scoping, let me continue to give you a bit of context about meaning in life because it could be helpful for us. So one of the things that uh, psychologists have been talking about for a while, particularly positive psychology, is this idea of happiness. And they speak about eudaimonic and hedonic happiness. When we talk about meaning, clearly we're falling more on the eudaimonic side of things, which is about the deeper things of life. Hedonic is more about simple pleasures or things that we can experience in the moment. Uh, meaning is kind of nested within well-being and purpose is nested within meaning. So meaning in life has been closely linked to many kinds of things. A, a few are positive well-being, uh, both subjective well-being and psychological well-being. Uh, meaning in life for research, a lot of it has been done with older people or those who are dying. Um, a lot of cancer survivor research around this meaning in life topic. There's lots of things that have been, pro that have been proposed that make life meaningful. Things like religious faith, positive relationships, meaningful work, challenge, achievement, success, pro-social behavior, or some things that resonate with self-determination theory, things like competence, connection, autonomy. Positive affect is a big one that we see coming out in the research, as well as things like a sense of belongingness to a culture or community. Many researchers have also taken an evolutionary perspective to meaning. For example, they believe that it's evolved as a basic human need because it has survival advantages. Um, and meaning in life has been shown to be flexible and that it can be experimentally manipulated. So kind of taking all of that together, I think for me, if meaning in life is beneficial, and I'm gonna show you very shortly that I really think that it is, if it's connected somehow to uh, being a, a positive thing for people, if it's something that is proven to be manipulatable and flexible, then for me, that flows very easily into my proposed research questions. For example, what is the most effective way to help someone find deeper meaning in their life? If, if we can manipulate this, then what's the most effective way that we could do that? And perhaps what are those interventions that could be used to do this? And so a part of my scoping research has looked a little bit at positive psychology interventions, um, particularly in this meaning in life space. Um, I think another important distinction that we need to make quickly is that we're not talking about the meaning of life. Lots of people think that we're talking about that. Uh, that's a little bit too ethereal. It's a bit too intangible, not something that we can really quantify. So meaning in life is very clearly about those three things. It's a bit more humble and grounded, less philosophical or theological, perhaps. But why is this research important? Well, I think it's important because meaning in life acts as a quick thermometer for thriving. It's highly correlated with human flourishing. And King et al. even declared that meaning in life is regarded as the most consistent predictor of well-being. Meaning in life is positively correlated with so many amazing competence, health, autonomy, self-esteem, happiness, positive relationships, extroversion, spiritual health, and longevity. It's negatively correlated with suicidality, substance abuse, stress, negative emotions, neuroticism, depression, etc. So I think another reason why this research is important uh, for me in particular is because meaning in life has been measured to date in many different ways using many different instruments, but all of those have been based on self-assessment, which is okay, that is the gold standard in this area. Um, but it has been measured in a way that focuses on global judgments of meaning, thinking about our life very generally, uh, kind of like your weekend, rather than thinking about the smaller things, the daily things. Another problem is that, uh, like many psychological phenomena, meaning in life has been measured using a, a trait approach to, to measurement rather than a state approach or a within per person approach to measurement. And I think another thing that I, I see is that the, the concept of meaning in life remains high and abstract and lofty. You know, for example, 
if I want to have greater coherence? How do I actually do that or more significance in my life? So I think for me, the proposed research that I'm putting out there today is important because it will move meaning in life from how meaningful is your life in general to what can I do today? What can I do today to make my life more meaningful? And my, my argument is simple. It's, it's, it's that surely a meaningful life is a, a life that's made up of meaningful days. But so far, research hasn't really driven down to the point where we know what the daily drivers of meaning are. So this study is focused on discovering what the daily drivers of meaning are at a behavioral level in the daily, and then looking at how that compares to these, these broader, more global judgments of meaning in life. I, I think it's about bringing meaning in life down to small events that are lost when we make those global judgments. Uh, watching a beautiful sunset, like the one that I, I saw there in Cape Town that's in that, that top picture there, uh, or the, the great hike that I had with my family on the weekend where my three-year-old son fell asleep in the backpack, which was very funny. It's about coming back to those daily moments and allowing our meaning in life judgments to come from those and trying to figure out what are those daily, daily drivers. So how do I propose we're actually going to do this? Let's let's make this practical again. So this study is focused on examining the relationship between context specific daily behavioral choices and a more global sense of meaning in life. To do that, we're going to conduct two studies. One is a systematic literature review on meaning in life, where we're going to use a bunch of those keywords around meaning in life and daily. We're going to look in, you know, Medline, PsychInfo, the expected kind of databases. And we're going to conduct a uh, systematic review. We're going to follow the PRISMA guidelines, the, the 27 item checklist, and we're going to register that with Prospera. In study two, we will conduct a daily diary study using the process based assessment tool, as well as a few other questions that I'm going to go through with you in a second. And we're going to look at how those daily behavioral choices are related to a more global sense of meaning in life as measured by the comprehensive measure of meaning, which is just a very new instrument that's been proposed by Vanderweel using those seven distinctions for meaning in life. Um, so to give you some sense of what that's going to look like, um, there's a little visual for you. So over 60 days, we're going to do our daily measures. At day zero or day one, we're going to get them to do the larger global meaning assessment using the comprehensive measure of meaning. And then at day 30 and day 60, all the while, while these daily diary studies are happening. To give you some idea of what our daily diary is going to look like, it's going to have 16 items from the process based assessment tool. Those are going to be things like today I chose to do things that were personally important to me. Today I did things that hurt my connection with people who are important to me. That gives you an idea about that relational element. Today I struggled to connect with the moments of my day to day life. Are people struggling with being attentive to the moments, with being present? Today, I acted in ways that helped my physical health. Participants would rate their agreement or disagreement on a scale of zero to 100. Uh, and they'll also do that with two questions that are drawn from the positive and negative affect schedule, shortened as PANIS, which is made famous by Watson and Clark in 1988 and has been well established and used all over the place. And those are simply today I felt enthusiastic, which is a measure of positive affect, and today I felt upset, which is a simple measure of negative affect. There's also going to be one single question. To what extent do you feel your life to be meaningful, which is drawn from a paper by Stroko et al in 2015, which found that this single question to the degree that any single question can kind of capture that global sense of meaning to be both valid and reliable. Um, so what we're going to do then uh, is do our best to recruit. 
uh, our participants to this study. Um, we're looking to recruit hopefully about 130 participants, looking to recruit 100 people, English speaking adults, through Amazon Mechanical Turk or MTurk, which again has been established as a, a great way to do this. Um, 30 people we think will be drawn from Net Ministries, and that will be from the volunteers and the staff. Obviously, for me being involved with Net, this does prevent some conflict of interest, which we're going to need to deal with ethically. And we're going to propose three ways to do this. One, um, recruitment of these volunteers will not be done by myself. It's going to be clear to participants in their information sheet that their participation in the study is completely optional and will have no impact on their outcomes with NET. And all data is going to go straight to our chief investigator where it will be de-identified before it's passed on to me as the student investigator. Data for the daily survey and the CMM will be collected through REDCap. And all the data collected will be stored safely on servers in Australia. Okay. Let's talk about our analysis. In order to analyze this data uh, that's going to come forward, we are going to utilize multi-level analyses with daily measures nested within persons. The three variables that we are examining are the positive and negative affect, daily meaningful behavior, and this global sense of meaning in life. Uh, our study is longitudinal over two months, so a part of what we'll be examining is how these variables change over time. And in particular, looking at three things. Uh, the within-person correlation, which is the relationship between daily positive affect and daily meaningful behavior. We're going to be looking at autocorrelation or stability, which is just how much do these things naturally go up and down within a particular person over time. And then we're going to look at the, the intercepts between this daily meaningful behavior and the positive and negative affect. Um, and we're going to use this to test some hypotheses, uh, which I'll get to a bit later, but like an antecedent model that's going to predict that daily meaningful behavior uh, is, is directly connected to positive and negative affects. So if I'm in a good mood, I behave well, or if I'm in a bad mood, I don't behave well. Some hypotheses like that that I'll expand on later. And Given that when we're talking about these positive and negative, uh, our, our, our daily variables from the PANIS, as well as our meaningful behavior, because these things are going to be happening every day for 60 days, and because we're going to try to compare that to the global measure of meaning, which is only happening once a month, we are going to need to average that out um, over that those 30 days and 60 days. And so that's going to become what we're going to call our typical penis and our typical meaningful behavior. Um, so there will be an average that we will need to do there. The last thing that we need to consider is if we have enough power to do this analysis well. And uh, being someone who's been away from statistics for a little while in my formal study, uh, in researching this, um, I came across some tables created by Sherbaum and Ferder in 2009 uh, that talk about statistical power in this kind of multi-level modeling that we're proposing. Um, and what those tables sh would show is that given that we have 130 participants, hopefully, with 60 observations each from those daily diaries, we're going to have 7,800 data points. And we're thinking that that's going to even at a low effect level, that that's going to give us more than enough power for our analysis. We're going to use that analysis to test a few hypotheses. Uh, in particular, um, what we're hoping to see is that there is a connection between daily meaningful behavior and a global sense of meaning in life, because what that would allow us to do is, is intervene on those daily behaviors, those daily drivers, to help meaning in life for someone to increase. So that, that's the very basic one. Um, and if we see a correlation between the daily meaningful behavior and the global meaning, that would be one hypothesis. 
another one is that there is a chance, uh, because based on past research, that there may be no link between these, these daily meaningful behavior and the global measure of meaning. And that's because, for example, Brockman et al. in 2017, who talked about the kind of global judgments that we make when we look at things like this, said that often what's happening on the daily and those global judgments are not the same. Um, and if that's the case, we might find that mood and daily meaningful behavior are connected, but that they're not connected to those global judgments of meaning in life. Finally, uh, on to a few practicals. Uh, in terms of a timeline, uh, before the end of this year, uh, hopefully once I'm confirmed, I'll be looking to resubmit my ethics. It's been entirely finished, uh, which is good news, so that won't take long. Um, so I'll be able to put that in hoping to apply for funding through the PR SSS um, in order to get the $50 per participant that we would like to offer them uh, as a, a way of saying thanks for participating in our daily diary study. Um, and hopefully next year, once ethics is approved, perhaps sometime around April, we'll begin our recruitment and hopefully we, we can begin some data collection in the second half of next year. Uh, you can see a few of the other things that I've noted there, including registering uh, the systematic review with Prospero, uh, the timing of my mid candidature review, and because I'm doing this part time, hoping to finish up in about 2025. Uh, you can see the budget that I've laid out there, which is very simple. And in terms of further training, I just want to note that uh, some further training in statistical analysis would be helpful for me moving forward. So thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen uh, to me today and for participating in this little brown bag seminar. Um, I guess it's time to open up for questions. Thank you.